Hey, what's going on everyone? So today I wanna to talk a little bit about the Ambernic RG552 because Ambernic have officially unveiled the price of its handheld. It's gonna be 226 US dollars and it'll be on sale on their official website, which is www.ambernic.com and it'll be on sale on the 6th of December. So I wanted to make a video talking about the price itself because there was a lot of speculation beforehand that it was going to be a lot more expensive than Ambernic's previous handhelds. So now that we finally have the price, I think it's a good time to talk about it. And as well as that, uh, I want to bring up some of the points that people have made about the prices, also about Ambernic and how it's known for its build quality, and also about the RG552 itself. Now I'd love to hear your comments, so make sure to comment below whether you are going to be getting an RG552, and if you're not going to get one, let me know below why you're not going to get one. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and we have a Discord server, so come along and join us there, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Okay, so we're on Ambernic's official website, and let me just zoom in a little bit for you guys, uh, so that you can see the price, it's a little bit small. But as you can see, this is the RG552 on its official website. It says here it's $226.99, so 227 US dollars. And it says that it's sold out for now. Uh, that's because it will be on sale in one day and three hours and 47 minutes, as you can see at the top there. Um, so uh, what you have here is you have a few options here. You've got the gray model for 16 gigabytes. So this is a uh, so it has 64 gigabytes of internal storage but they're also going to give you a 16 gigabyte micro sd card with linux on it as well so uh, that is pretty cool so there's a dual boot uh, operating system there as well so if you wanted to boot from android you would boot from the internal storage and if you wanted linux you would boot from the micro sd card Okay, let's talk about the performance of the handheld because there was a lot of talk about the RG552 having the Rockchip 3399 and it being inferior to the PowerKitty X18S which has the Unisoc T61A for example. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of talk about that and the prices and things like that. And I think some things that we have to think about is the fact that with a handheld, um, there are lots of different reasons why people may like to buy a handheld. Some people buy it for the uh, build quality, some people buy it for the form factor, some people might not even want to have a clamshell device and only want a landscape device. So there are a, a whole number of reasons why people may buy a different handheld. Some people may even buy a handheld just for a much smaller screen size that they can put in their pockets. So. Uh, there are so many different things, uh, so many reasons why somebody may prefer a different handheld. And performance is obviously going to be one of them. Now, for me, I find that performance, um, sometimes it's not just all about numbers on a chart. Like, it's all well and good to look at Geekbench and see what the uh, performance is there. But what really matters in the end is how well it plays those games. So for me, when I look at Rockchip 3399 on the RG552, what I'm really looking for is how well does it play that PSP library? Because I think that's where it's really at. And that would be uh, the bar that I would set for this handheld. So if the RG552 can play uh, pretty much all of the PSP library, then I think it's done its job well. And I don't think it matters too much whether you're playing this at like 1x resolution or 3x resolution uh, because the PowerKitty X18S plays a lot of PSP games at 3x resolution. Um, and that, I say that because the um, PowerKitty X18S, when I went to play that, while it looks uh, better at 3x resolution, I don't think it looks that much better, especially on that small screen, uh, that five inch screen anyways. So uh, you're not really gonna see that much difference at 1x, 3x. What's really more important is uh, the performance of it or the frame rates and how smooth that is. So if the RG552 can hold a really good frame rate for the games, uh, then I think it will have done its job. And we've seen some videos coming out of Ambernic. Uh, they are official videos though. Uh, so of course they wanna show it looking good. But uh, we've seen God of War and Tekken uh, 6, I believe, on PSP, and they showed it running pretty well. Uh, so I'm looking forward to uh, testing that out and hopefully it's going to play a lot of uh, the PSP library. Now in terms of GameCube, obviously, um, I'm not expecting too much in terms of GameCube performance, 
on the RG552 and that's really just something that it has to give up but um, what's really important for me is uh, whether it plays PSP, Dreamcast, Nintendo 64 on the uh, RG552. So one thing people have said to justify the higher prices of the RG552 is that Ambonic in general has better build quality than some of its competitors. And I do understand this line of reasoning because for me, uh, I'm a big fan of form factor and build quality and finish and that's why I really enjoy Ambonic's devices. Um, so I have three of them. I have the RG351P and I have the RG351M. And so uh, I really enjoy just playing a game and sometimes it doesn't even really matter like what game you're playing on them. You kind of just enjoy the experience of that handheld. I know a lot of other people are probably in that camp as well that like Ambonic devices. And it's the same reason why uh, even to this day like I can just play something on the Switch Lite or Vita and it's not really about the graphics or whether it's an old game, but I'm just actually enjoying the experience of playing on that handheld. And so uh, I definitely understand where uh, Amity people are coming from um, in, in regards to um, the build quality of their devices. And I also understand where other people are coming from, where they don't see build quality as, as important a factor as like some of the other things that they're looking for. For example, like if you just care about performance and emulating uh, the most number of games, uh, then you may kind of think that there are other devices out there that would be better suited for your needs. So uh, there's lots of different reasons why somebody may want to pick up a handheld. And for people who really like ambient uh, they really, I think they really like the form factor and finish of their handhelds. But I think it's not really so much about performance of the chip or, or that um, Ambonic is trying to raise the prices uh, excessively or whether it's about the build quality and uh, that's going to demand a lot of care and attention and design and materials cost is going to be really high. I don't think it's about any of that. I think it's really just about the economics of the situation, uh, the world that we're actually living in right now in terms of demand versus supply uh, because there's just an unprecedented uh, demand for this handheld I think because it's got a lot of fans from its previous handhelds so uh, and there's also going to be a lot of people who have just been waiting for that next handheld from Ambonic rather than just buying that RG351 now so I think uh, that's what's happening there is a ton of demand here and they simply just don't have enough supply uh, and that's what I think. I don't know. I haven't talked to anybody, um, but I feel like for them, uh, the price is increasing or has increased uh, to $220 because they don't have enough supply to, um, to cater for that demand out there. And so that is why the price has gone up by so much. Now, the thing is, some people might be a little bit mad because uh, they were hoping that it was going to be $150 um, based on the fact that um, the performance of this was somewhere in line about a $150 handheld uh, but and myself included I expected that this to be about $150 but I think the simple reality is that uh, Ambonic know the demand out there and they know how many devices that they have and if they were to try to sell this $150 that and all of these devices would just go in the first minutes uh, maybe through scalpers and bots and that sort of thing and then it's probably going to be resold online somewhere at much higher prices at the um, inflated prices uh, pretty much what you see with the ps5 so i think sony and microsoft they all made a mistake when they priced it at 499 dollars because that in the end uh, what happened was uh, you had a lot of scalpers and bots take all of those consoles and then ended up selling that on ebay for like way more and if ambonic did that they, that would probably happen uh, as well so i think you know uh, do you want the manufacturer setting the price, uh, a higher price to $220? Um, or do you want the secondary market to set the price? Um, either way, uh, the market is going to set the price itself. And we may even see this, uh, once it gets sold out, this may even go higher from people who want it. But uh, the manufacturer is saying, okay, we really don't have enough supply. At least that's what I think. Um, and, and they're going to sell it for a little bit higher because... Uh, they think that this is a price where they're going to at least uh, keep it at that market price. 
And it's very simple. If you don't think it's worth it, don't buy it at $220, and then that will make the price drop. And if you think it's worth it, then go and buy it at $220. And that's really just how the market works. It can't be any simpler than that. Uh, we'll see what happens if a lot of people think it's not worth it then the price is eventually going to drop and then you'll be able to purchase it at a little bit lower price and that's kind of what happened with the RG351 anyways uh, it started at $120 and uh, eventually it got down to like $90 and $85 through sales and things like that okay one final thing before I go and that is that I may be getting a review unit in from Ambinic themselves now another reviewer told me this it wasn't Ambinic so it may still not happen but uh, I may be getting one from Ambinic and if I do end up getting offered one I'll happily accept because there have been a lot of people watching the RG552 videos a lot more than the other handhelds so I feel like uh, people really want to see uh, this device in action so I'd be more than willing to accept a review unit for this. Now, uh, when the website goes live, I will also try to buy a second one. And I think if I end up getting two units in, I'd like to give that second one away. Uh, I haven't worked out all of the details yet, but uh, in terms of uh, shipping and all of that sort of thing. Uh, so we'll work all of that stuff out later. Um, I can't really afford that much for shipping, uh, maybe $50 or, or something like that. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, and then yeah, we'll work out those details later. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this one. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you guys in the next one.